My name is Dr. Anthony Tallarico, and today what I'm going to be talking about are the issues that occur in the cervical spine. When we look at the cervical spine on x-ray, there are about six different presentations that we see. And I'm going to show you the, the actual spine so you can see what more normal looks like, and then I'm going to show you some of the different deviations from normal that we'll see on an x-ray over the course of time. Okay, so this is a normal cervical spine, and what makes it normal is it's in a C-shaped curve. These little joints in the back of the spine are actually angled on about a 45 or so degree angle, and it creates what's called a lordosis, or a forward-facing curve like this. This would be the face out here, and this is the back of the head. So when we go to the board here, I'm going to draw out some of these. Now, artwork isn't my strength, so I'm going to illustrate some things that are probably be a little funny when you look at it. But So I'm going to do the head, okay, here's the nose, and here's the neck. So this is the lordosis. This is considered to be normal. So our fellow here, he has a smile on his face because this is the normal looking cervical spine. This is what we want to see when we take an x-ray. Of course, the spine has seven bones that are lined up in here. And that's what we want it to look like. Okay? So we want the, the spine to have that normal C-shaped curve. We want this to be uniformly spaced. And we want the head to be relatively over the center of the shoulders. The next type of spine that we see and we'll put a little bit of a little unhappy face there, sorry. And this is called a kyphotic spine. Okay? This is backwards. So, in a lot of times when we see this, it's due to a more acute presentation, an injury, a lot of muscle spasm. I see this more frequently in women than men, but this is not a good state to be in. So if you're acutely injured and your spine looks like this, but then it eventually goes back to looking more like this, you're okay. If it stays like this, this is not good because these joints that we talked about now in the back of the spine are being pulled apart. So what happens is these spaces back here, this, this joint space, these are called facet joints back here, get pulled apart and that causes problems, pain, discomfort. A lot of times people will complain of things in their shoulder blades, their upper back, and it's actually all being referred out of the neck. Over a period of time, this will develop some pretty significant degenerative change and dis discomfort, and it will be not a good situation to have going forward. Number three. This is called a hypolordosis, okay, or a loss of curve. And this means that the normal curve, the normal weight-bearing mechanism, the way to dissipate load, the way to dissipate you know, the activities of daily living, the, the fortress that you built here is now gone. So you essentially have a stick. So all the stresses now are being put directly down straight and not dissipating through the curve. These arches are very efficient mechanisms of carrying and distributing weight and force over a distance. So when we lose this now, we have a lot of up and down stress, and this leads to, over time, a lot of degenerative disc and joint problems. This is very common, this is very common, this is very common, okay? A lot of times when somebody hurts themselves or injures their neck, they may not have a lot of symptoms, but when we look at their spine, over time, if they've, if they've presented with one of these, in a period of five to seven years after an injury, we're going to start to see degenerative change start to show up, in, especially in the front of the spine with these little spurs that's called spondylosis. And that just means that there's been improper movement, improper function over a course of time. Now the next three presentations I'm going to show you are the toughest to fix and they cause a lot of problems which people might not even associate with their necks. This is called a third harmonic. 
Third harmonic means that there are one, two, three curves in the neck. Where there should just be one forward facing curve, there's now three curves. The third harmonic is probably due to a chronic hypolordosis that's beginning to degenerate over time. Most of the times when I see this, there's already significant degeneration in through the neck. Incidentally, a lot of folks who have the third harmonic don't even complain of neck pain. The number one headache for them is headaches. They complain of headaches. They also complain of sleep problems, ringing in the ears, and fatigue. So, they're not even complaining of neck issues per se. They're coming in with things like headaches. And then when we ask them questions, I say, do you have any ringing in the ears? Do you have any problems sleeping? Do you have a lot of fatigue? And they're like, yeah, how do you know that? Well, because this presentation puts a lot of stress on the nervous system, on the spinal cord. The spinal cord is sitting back here and it is shaped a lot like a banana. So if we want, based on our attachments in the, in the spine, we want our spine to be, spinal cord to be shaped like a banana. So in this presentation, our banana is turned this way, this one it's kind of stretched, and this one it's doing all types of things. Okay? So that presentation causes these problems. Now the next two I see almost exclusively in women. I have seen it in men. But it's rare because men have a lot more muscle and they have a heavier physiology than women. So they're able to dissipate forces and loads more effectively because of that increased mass. But these next two presentations are very, very difficult to fix and they cause a lot of problems that are not even neck problems per se. So the first one's called a lordotic. S. So again, if we think about the structures and what's going on here, this spinal cord's coming down and it has to kind of obey that curve that the neck is setting up. Now, it's not just a matter of bones. The muscles, the ligaments, the tendons, everything involved here has been conditioned to be in this shape. So in order to manifest any significant change for these folks over time, you have to address all of these things. You have to address the bones, the tendons, ligaments, and muscles. And these are sometimes deep muscles in the anterior part of the spine called legissimus coli. There's also some imbalances in the suboccipital muscles, the deep flexors of the neck, so there's all these different little intricacies that need to go in. But what's important to, to start with is knowing which one you have. Because if you just go and you say, my neck hurts, and nobody x-rays you or nobody even investigates, the chances of you getting fixed and restored to normal function are almost, almost impossible to happen. So the last and worst, and this is called a kyphotic S. These three cause these problems, okay? They may not have enormous neck pain, but they almost always have headaches, sleep problems, ringing the ears, and fatigue. Sometimes they'll also present with things like uh, vertigo, okay? Uh, there might be issues with, you know, facial, facial stuff, and so we're looking at nervous system components primarily. But remember, the overlying thing is we have a nervous system that has to be traveling down through that. And so, we look at this and we say, man, there's all these different uh, permutations of the cervical spine. We got to start with knowledge first. We first have to know which one you are. And then, after we know what you have, then we can start to develop a treatment plan, a care plan that addresses this. So you can't treat this this the same way as you treat this. They're just not the same. The physics is totally different. 
So we have to address things very specifically. So if a person has no curve, their, their, ob their objective is to get more like this. So it takes time for somebody to get back towards the more normal. Okay? And how long you've had it is also important. If you're in a third harmonic and you've had it for you know, 20, 30 years, because we know that because of all the degenerative change, at best we might be able to get that middle harmonic out or get you straight. We might be able to get some lordosis in there. And I've seen this happen. And it's a, usually a gigantic quality of life that returns to a person when they start to be able to sleep normally, when they're not having headaches every day, single day, when their ears aren't ringing, when they don't have balance problems or vertigo. So these are important things to know. And I get the reason I make this video is because of my big why is my frustration. Because I see patients all the time from all different sources, okay? And I'll say, well, did anybody ever x-ray you? Yeah, they x-rayed me. Okay, well, what did they say? They said my neck was straight. Okay, so we're talking about this. And I'll look at them and say, okay, let's check it out. We check it out, and they say, I'm, maybe there's something else going on. Let's figure it out. So we take some additional x-rays, and it turns out they have one of these. That's a totally different presentation. That's something altogether different. So we need to know first what it is. So I've had patients go, and I, I've even called other doctors on the phone, and I say, well, they have a lordotic S. They have that going on in their spine. They're like, I don't, what is that? So we need to know what these things are, because if we don't know what they are, we can't fix them. Once we've established what they are, then we can figure out, okay, here's what we need to do to get restoration to this spine, to get this person doing better. So my big why is, just I want people to understand that there are different presentations and that they demand a different approach and it could take significant amount of time if you're in one of these to get back to a more normal function because a lot of times people say well you know that guy said he was going to fix me or that gal said they're going to fix me in two or three visits nonsense you're, there, there's no way you're not going to turn this into this in, in a few visits especially if it's firmly entrenched. If all the muscles, tissues, ligaments, tendons, everything is trained to do that, it's going to take significant time to retrain, well first detrain and then retrain that body to accept the proper position. So these things here, these presentations here, the likelihood that you're going to wind up in surgery, a long-term kyphotic neck, it's just only 23 times more. So this neck is going to be wind up as a surgical neck 23 times more than this one. Okay? And we know that these permutations also wind up in surgery in a disproportionate way because the spine is not designed to work that way. And there are, normally we say years and years ago we would say the only way that you could get like this is due to trauma. But now with the technology and people constantly on you know, devices with their heads down, terrible posture, and now they're calling something text neck. All that stuff, the forward head position, all of those things cause these different things to happen in a more aggressive way. Also, if you're prone to uh, laying on the couch a lot, or uh, reading or watching TV in bed with your head sort of jammed down, you're putting enormous stress on the ligaments and tendons of the spine, and you're going to change the shape. So we don't want that, so we want good hygiene in terms of how we can manage a spine, but not only that, but how it can last through a lifetime. It's designed to last a lifetime, but the things we do to it uh, shorten that lifespan tremendously. And then you wind up with you know, maybe a lot of neck pain if you're one of these, or problems in, you know, if, you're, if you have a hypolordotic spine, these put a lot of pressure on the nerves, so you get you know, arm and hand pain, shoulder pain, and so you have surgery, you have something to decompress those nerves, but the underlying problem, the loss of the lordosis, the, the improper spine function is still there. You cut away the disc that was putting pressure on the nerve, or you cut away the, the spur or the degenerative complex that was going on in there, but that underlying process is still there. You might even have had things fused um, so, that, uh, so that you can get more stability in there, but still the, the neck is still not right, and so it dictates that you still have some level of ongoing care in order to get optimally well.
Okay, I hope this helps. I am going to do a separate uh, presentation on headaches and I'm also going to do some other presentations on where in the cervical spine where certain problems um, occurring in different places what type of symptoms you would expect to, to see and this will maybe help you to understand hey perhaps that's me maybe maybe I have this or this or this and um, nobody nobody knows that or I never had an x-ray or I've been going to somebody for years and no one, no one knows this, they didn't know this. So I want to try to empower you to make the best possible decisions you can make about your health. And if we can do that, I think you'll have a much better chance of enjoying the quality of life that you deserve to enjoy. Alrighty, thank you.